Okay, you've read the title. Today we'll try to recreate the look of uh, John Wick 4. I just launched a trailer, grabbed a couple of reference frames from it, and uh, I also downloaded the footage. Let's open DaVinci Resolve. Here's the footage that I... the look that I ended up with. And this is footage that was captured on the red camera. I do not own red camera, of course. This is a really expensive camera. I've never worked with red footage. This is like the first time, maybe a second time. There is a link in the description which you can follow and download the same footage for free if you want to exercise, if you want to try how to work with red footage. So here is the final look, but first we need to analyze and to have a look at our reference frame and our reference look. For reference frame I chose this one. So let's analyze it. The first thing that we can see is that this image has extreme contrast. Even some of uh, portions are clipping. These candles, they are clipping, which is totally fine. And the shadows, they touch zero, meaning that the contrast is quite extreme. If we go to the vector scope, we can see that almost all of our pixels, they lie in this uh, area. And some of them, meaning shadows, uh, not the deepest, but nonetheless, shadows, they lie in the blue sector of the image. So we're going to try to recreate the same thing. Before we begin, let's open our settings and go to color management. I'm going to use color science DaVinci YRGB, timeline color space DaVinci white game at intermediate, and output color space same as timeline, which is not correct. Why didn't I change that? Rex 709 gamma 2.4. Is it going to change my image drastically or not? No, because I did like... Yeah, it's not going to change it because I did everything correctly, thank God. But nonetheless, let's do it like it's supposed to be done. Rex 709 Gamma 2.4. Now, we're going to disengage everything and then engage one by one. And we're going to start in that order in which I created them. First, I created the first node which is IDT. I just uh, applied color space transform and input color space red color 4. By the way, I have no idea whether this is correct or not, because I've never worked with red footage. I just uh, thought that this looked okay. Red color 4. And by the way, you're not supposed, if, if you have no idea what kind of footage you're working with, or you do not have an uh, color space transform setting in here, for example, some DJI footages, they do not, you cannot find correct transform, um, color space transform parameters in here. You can experiment and see what's working better and what's working worse. So it's, it's not like I'm committing a crime trying to set it, uh, like, uh, eyeballing it instead of just following the documentation. So red color four, red log G three uh, G 10, and go into transform it into DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. And then I created a second, which is a second node, which is called ODT. And this one is going to transform our footage from White Gamut Intermediate to Rec. 709 Gamut 2.4. This way, our footage is being transformed into DaVinci White Gamut. We are working, we're color grading inside of DaVinci White Gamut, and then we are outputting it into Rec. 709. Gamma 2.4, which is what we need. So the next thing that I did, I did some primaries, meaning I increased some gain, reduced lift to establish contrast. I didn't touch the contrast slider. I just used my gain and lift to lift up the gain and to drop the shadows to, in, in, to basically control contrast. You can control contrast by this slider and pivot, or you can just push and pull gain gamma and lift and do the same thing but in more like controlled way so i just did that then the main like note the most important one is push and pull in this note if i enable that i just pushed my gain into uh, I, I was trying to achieve the same color that she has on her face but it's not going to be possible because the lighting is completely different and they are lighting uh, this actress with the orangey light to to achieve the same cold temperature as these candles and to sell the effect that her face is being lit by the candles. Of course, here is nothing 
like that, nothing like that is happening, so I just try to eyeball it and to park it somewhere in those regions. Basically, I just pushed gain into this direction, as you can see, and just pushed a lift into the, this bluish direction. But do not forget that we do not want to have colored shadows. This is not going to look well. And if we look at our reference, we can see that our deepest shadows, they are neutral, as they are supposed to. So we're going to go to the log wheels and we're going to neutralize our shadows by pushing the shadow like this wheel into this pinkish orangey uh, sector to neutralize our shadows. And then we are going to control them with this range, low range slider, as we typically do. Now, glow effect. Why did I again apply glow effect to the image? Because there is a lot of uh, light sources in the frame. If you can see a lot of light sources, it means that the glow effect is going to act, it's going to make your image better. So we're going to enable that. And we're going to have a look at the effects. Shine threshold is uh, set to zero. Spread is also set to zero. It makes it, it makes the image punchier. It makes it have a look. If we increase the spread, our image is losing like this punch. So to make our image punchier, because uh, John Wick movie is really really punchy and is like really contrasty and saturated and that's why it looks so great so i'm going to reduce the spread to zero and of course we cannot leave it like that i'm going to reduce blend to like half 0 0.5 because if you increase it all the way it, it like it's like too much 0 0.5 that's it now the next one is hs cell if we enable that it gives us just minor, minor corrections. And this is what I did. I just uh, went to Hue versus Hue, corrected a little bit of uh, this bluish color, went to Hue versus Saturation, added Saturation a little bit to the yellow portion, to the green portion, and that's it. I did nothing else in this note. And also, there is no filmy grain, there is no noise in, in uh, John Wick movie. That's why I added noise reduction at the beginning of our pipeline. Remember that noise reduction is, in, is available only in studio version of DaVinci Resolve. I chose two frames faster, increased a little bit of Luma and Chroma, and disconnected Luma from Chroma in spatial noise reduction and increased Chroma to 3.2 which is like fine the image is quite clean and that's it you do not really need a lot of notes to create this look that's it the look is uh, well quite similar in my opinion considering that the lighting is quite different and it's holding really really nicely nothing is uh, crumbling nothing is dropping nothing is jiggling nothing is ruining our image everything looks fine so this is quite a quick tutorial on how to achieve john wick look thank you for watching and goodbye